Aloha, gang. So this is section 10.6, which is using the quadratic formula. Uh, if you remember, in section 10.3, we solved quadratic equation using square roots. And in 10.4, we solved by factoring. 10.3, we could solve by square root because there is no middle term. It's just a binomial. They're, they didn't have that middle x term. Okay, so uh, as a quick reminder, all we did was add 9 to both sides to cancel that out. x squared equals 9. And this is where you took your square root, and x was equal to plus or minus 3. And if you remember, the solutions are your x-intercepts. So if you thought of it as a graph, that's where it would cross at, at 3 and negative 3, and you'd have your parabola. Okay? Um, solving by factoring, if you have a trinomial and you can factor, you can just factor this down to x plus 2 times x plus 5. And that equals to 0. And this is where you use the 0 product property. And you make x plus 2 equal to 0. And x plus 5 equal to 0. And saving the step of showing all the work, x was equal to negative 2 or negative 5. OK, so those are the easy ones. The other um, part is, what if you have a quadratic equation like this on the top that cannot factor? OK, so this one we could factor. What if you have a quadratic equation that cannot factor? How would you solve that? And that's where 10.6 comes into play, which is the quadratic formula. Okay. The first thing you need to do is put it into standard form. So it's ax squared plus bx plus c and make it equal to 0. So you have to move everything to the left side of the equal sign first. Okay. Whatever's in front of the x squared is your a. Whatever is in front of the x, including the sign, is your b. And whatever is the constant, including the sign, is your c. And when we do the quadratic formula, it's x is equal to, and I tried to color code it for you, negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. So I tried to color code it for you so you can see. I know the C is hard to see, <laughs> uh, but it's purple. Um, and here's how you would do it. So here's that quadratic equation here, x squared plus 4x minus 9 equals 0. It's already in standard form, so I can see that my A is invisible 1. This is my A. Okay. B is the 4, or positive 4, and the C is the negative 9. And now I just need to put it into the quadratic formula. So I, I would put it as x equals negative b, so it's negative 4. Since this 4 is positive, it's negative 4 plus or minus the square root of b squared so I'm going to take the 4, so 4 squared minus 4, and this 4 is always going to be 4, that's why it's in black here. So 4 times A, which is 1, times C, which is negative 9. And you put that all over to times a, which is 1. And now all we do is multiply it out. And I'm going to stop color coding because it's getting kind of hard. So I would get x is equal to negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 16 minus negative 36. So actually, it becomes plus 36 Okay, all over 2. And now I can simplify inside of the radical. And I get x equals negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 52 all over 2. The square root of 52 you should have memorized is 7.21. And it goes longer, but for this case, you can just round it off to the nearest 100. So x is equal to negative 4 plus or minus 7.21 all over 2. And this is where we need to split it for the plus or minus. So it's negative 4, x is equal to negative 4, plus 7.21 all over 2, and negative 4 
minus 7.21 all over 2. When you do that in your head, you should have this memorized. x is equal to 1.605 or negative 5.605. And so there are your solutions, otherwise known as your x-intercepts. And it's the same way as, um, it's the same answer as far as where it crosses the x-axis on your graph if you were to graph it. Okay, so here's another um, example over there on the far right. The first thing I need to, need to do is make it equal to zero. So I'm going to add six to both sides to cancel this out. And then I get x squared minus 5x plus 6 equals to zero. Okay, and when I do the quadratic formula, x is equal to negative b, so negative negative 5 becomes positive 5, because my b is negative 5, my a is 1, okay. negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared, and when I put this in, I want to make sure I put the parentheses around the negative 5, so it becomes a positive 25 when I square it, minus 4 times a times c, all over 2a, which is 2 times 4. Okay, I'm going to simplify the radical. x is equal to 5 plus or minus the square root of 25 minus 24 all over 2. I can see that 25 minus 24 is 1. So x is equal to 5 plus or minus square root of 1 all over 2. And we know that the square root of 1 is 1, so I'm just going to erase the square root sign. And now this is where I split it for the plus or minus. So x is equal to 5 plus 1 over 2, and 5 minus 1 over 2. Okay, so this 6, 6 over 2 becomes 3, and this 4 over 2 becomes 2. If you ever get whole numbers like that, it's okay. What that just means is that you could have actually factored this trinomial here. So if I have x squared minus 5x plus 6 equals 0, and I'll do it in a different color pen so you can see it. If I had x squared minus 5x plus 6 equals 0, I could have just went x minus 2 times x minus 3 equals 0. Set this equal to 0, set this equal to 0, and x is equal to 2 or 3. So you can see it's much easier if you can factor it, but you can always use the quadratic formula and get there the same way. Okay, so there's three ways to solve. Again, you can use square roots if there's no middle term. You can factor if it's factorable. And if you cannot factor, you can use the quadratic formula, which you will need to memorize because it will be on the test. Okay, hope this helps. Take care.